Today's topic we'll dive into, erg mode gear selection, does it actually matter? If you've seen recent videos of mine where I've tested lower end smart trainers to see how they go in erg mode with the Llama lab test, you'll note that I have to change to the correct gear to get the correct flywheel speed for it to apply resistance. It gets a little technical, but yes, gear selection does matter in that respect. But does gear selection change the feel or the ride? The terminology used for the indoor trainer community is the word inertia. What's the inertia of the trainer? Probably not the most correct term to use. It's the one that's been adopted though. Uh, momentum of the flywheel or momentum of the ride probably is a little better, or kinetic energy. The topic of road feel, ride feel, or realism of an indoor trainer has started many in-depth conversations, I guess, online between people. It's very subjective. Today, what I'll stick to is an analogy that should be able to be understood, I guess, or communicated and measured. So let's say we're riding along outdoors, nice flat road at 330 watts, 90 RPM. 330 watts is what we're doing, 90 RPM, we're spinning along, we're cruising at probably, let's say 35 kilometers per hour. If I stop pedaling for just a few seconds and I ratchet my shoe up, I come back up to the handlebars and I get back up to speed, 330 watts, 90 RPM. There's not a lot of change in momentum. My kinetic energy is quite large, I'm moving along, I'm sailing, getting back up to speed isn't too hard at all. That's the first scenario. Second scenario. If you're riding up a hill, 330 watts, 90 RPM, same RPMs, same wattage as before, your speed is a lot different. If you reach down for a few seconds, ratchet your shoe up, you come back to the handlebars, again, you're riding up a hill, what happens when you need to get back up to speed? It takes a longer time. You have to really crank that pedal stroke over, but it's not just that. When you are cranking that pedal stroke over, you're pushing higher up on the pedal stroke all the way down. Whereas when you're riding on a flat road, as opposed to up a hill, you're just having to tap it to keep on top of the gear. That's a terminology that I use called being on top of the gear. You're not having to crank it over. Now, this is how some trainers feel with a smaller flywheel, smaller kinetic energy, small momentum, lower inertia. A trainer with high inertia or high momentum or high kinetic energy, you're on top of the gear. And this does change with some trainers. Specifically today, we're looking into the Wahoo Kicker direct drive smart trainer with that large flywheel. What I'm gonna to do today is replicate both of those scenarios indoors and we'll capture the data using the Rotor Twin Power Torque 360 pedal stroke analysis software. It has a 50 hertz refresh rate, so 50 times a second it can see my pedal stroke and we can put those two scenarios side by side. The first scenario being a slow flywheel speed, so that'll be the 36 on the front, 28 on the back I think I have. So a lower momentum flywheel speed, lower kinetic energy of the unit. And then I'll flip up into the big ring, so 52 on the front, 11 on the back. We'll get that flywheel really worked up, tons of energy in it, but saying 330 watts, 90 RPM. We'll quantify what it's like and if gear selection does really matter in erg mode with the Wahoo Kicker. A quick demonstration before we start. Flywheel here at low speed. We can stop that pretty quick. But when we get that flywheel speed up and running, it takes a lot more energy to slow it down. So that five and a half kilo does have a bit of beef behind it.
looking at those one after the other, not a lot actually stands out in the difference of the pedal stroke. But when we put them side by side, something very interesting pops up. The key is a little green line and the angle that's on for both scenarios. They are different. That's the OCA, Optimal Chainring Angle. Torque use this, or Rotor use this in their Torque 360 software to indicate the maximum force on the pedal stroke to indicate where you should install your curings. Now what's interesting here is that I'm doing the same power, same RPM, and it's telling me to install my curings in different positions based on the flywheel speed. This is a complex subject. Um, again, this may only seem very small, but let's flip up a graphic here indicating what's very high level simplified version of what happens during a pedal stroke. They're your muscle recruitment patterns. And you can see there there's a crossover point. So if you're grinding out a hill versus on top of the gear, you'll be recruiting different muscles. So I guess to answer the question from the feels and from the data that we've seen today, does gear selection matter in erg mode on the Kicker Direct Drive Smart Trainer? Yeah, it really does. If you're looking at using a single speed on a Kicker, make sure you select the right gear for your training. You don't wanna be training for uphills if you're doing flat time trials and vice versa. And to put this into practice, if you're in erg mode and you're hitting the spiral of death all the time because you just can't get on top of that gear, it feels like a bit of a slog, change up into a faster flywheel gear, get that thing spinning, and it's a little more forgiving. So you'll be able to get on top of that gear a little quicker. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for viewing, and let us know if you've tried this yourself. Let us know how your training goes in this scenario, and if there's any others in the whole collection that I have here you want me to have a look at with this, let me know. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.